So in this video, we're going to look at AC and DC coupling. Now I can guarantee that for my student experience of teaching, that uh, most students haven't got a clue why we have AC and DC coupling and also why it is so important. And so the best way to do this is once again, a little video to actually explain the impact of AC and DC coupling through experimentation and also why we even have AC and DC coupling. Um, so what's this all about? AC and DC coupling. It's really important to understand what AC and DC coupling is all about. And the best way to demonstrate this is through experimentation. Okay. So what I want uh, you to do is um, consider the following circuit. So we have channel A of our picoscope is set up for DC coupling. And this is a highly simplified version of what's going on inside the um, picoscope. And here I've represented my scope lead with this blue line here. And I've got a signal generated, which is running at 0.1 uh, Hertz square wave, five volts peak to peak with a zero volts offset. So what does that look like from a scope perspective? So let's go into our scope and I've just powered the scope up and I want to show you how I set my scope up for this. Now, this is not a good idea to use auto for this kind of thing because the signal is going running so slowly, it might take ages for it to sort itself out. So as I said before in the overview, it's really better idea to understand what it is you're looking at and therefore you set your scope up in accordance to that because it really truly helps you um, in terms of um, setting up test equipment and actually setting up because you're doing it from a place of knowledge, not of, oh, I'll use the auto button, woohoo. <laughs> now we know we've got a very slow signal here, which is actually running at 0.1 of a hertz, i.e. 100 millihertz. So that means this time base that's default had set up as one millisecond is far too fast to do what we're about to do. So let's change the uh, time base. And I would like to see um, this in the seconds region. So I'm gonna set my uh, time base up to uh, two seconds per division, okay? Now when I do that, you'll see it takes a long time for a complete uh, scan of my screen here. But there's no signal at the moment, so that's why there's nothing going on here at the moment. But that's the starting point, is make sure my time base is in the order of the type of signal I'm monitoring. So now the next thing is the channel itself. So let's go to channel A. And also before I do anything, I want to make sure my probes are set to times 10. So let me just make sure my probes are on times 10. And I'm actually going to do this on both of my channels because both probes are set to times 10. And I know I will probably forget <laughs> when it comes to looking at the other part of this circuit, okay? So let's just, uh, so I've just changed those. And I'm going to uh, leave this as plus or minus 10 volts because my signal is five volts peak to peak. I could use plus or minus five, but there's a reason for me using uh, plus or minus 10 because I want to get two signals onto the screen and I want to separate them so I can see them in their, all their detail. So, and we're also on DC coupling and uh, there's no offsets and all that kind of stuff. So we're all sorted. So I'm now going to also, before I do anything else, because uh, I want to try and stabilize this signal and have a reference. I'm going to set up the trigger. Now the trigger, there's a whole video about triggering, um, which uh, is worthwhile watching, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here so that it may help you a little bit and make, make you understand what's, um, why triggering is so important, because this is actually a very good example of where triggering and setup of triggering is really, really good. So I'm gonna set up the trigger and I'm going to put it onto single shot I'm going to use the um, uh, positive edge triggering and sourcing from A and the threshold I'm going to set to zero volts like that. And you'll see there's my uh, trigger point at zero volts, which is fantastic. And I'm now going to switch on my signal generator, which has got my 0.1 Hertz, five volt peak to peak, zero offset. Okay, so I'm gonna switch that on and now you will see the signal. Now it's gonna take a little while for this to sort itself out because it's actually looking for particular edges. And there we go, it's now locked and found the positive edge, which is what I've asked for in my trigger. And this is the pre-image of the signal. This is the post image of the signal. Now I want to get rid of this bit over here. So what I'm going to do is let's is stop now because it does a single sweep. I actually going to ask it to do another sample now that I've got a real sing signal there. So I'm going to uh, complete, um, ask it to run another sample. And this is what it's doing now. This is a really good uh, way of seeing what happens when you're using um, uh, the triggers, which are on single shot. 
And what it's now doing is waiting for a positive edge to lock the center point, because this is the uh, reference in the center of the screen. We can change that reference position, but at the moment it's set to zero. And here is our waveform. Yay, okay. So let's have a look at this in a little bit of detail. We've got minus 2.5 volts here, plus 2.5 volts here. That's our five volts peak to peak. It's got a zero offset, so this, that's why it's running around the zero volts line here. And we also know that if we look at the divisions here, we've got one, two, three, four divisions here. We've got two half divisions here, so that's five divisions all told. This is on uh, two uh, seconds per division, so it takes 10 seconds for it to do a complete cycle. If we take the reciprocal of 10 seconds, then that is 0.1 of a hertz. So everything is looking good. Okay, I'm now going to raise this because I'm going to produce a second signal now. So I'm going to lift uh, this signal up, whoops, um, up to here. So that moves it out of the way. And I'm now going to generate the second signal because I want to see what's happening when I go to AC coupling. Now, let me first show you what happens in AC coupling. So in AC coupling, now this is the red channel. So this red line is representing my scope pro. And once again, this is a simplified version of what's going on in the picoscope. But this is my channel B. And now when you AC couple, this capacitor is switched into the circuit and the capacitors block DC. So it gets rid of the DC component, but it's not quite as straightforward as that, which we're about to see. So let's see what happens to the signal when we put this capacitor in. Because remember, the, the scope is monitoring the same signal, but let's see what happens when we AC couple it instead. So let's go back to our uh, scope. And I'm now going to set up channel two, and I'm going to put this onto manual. I'd already set the uh, probes up, so that's on times 10, which is correct. I'm going to set the same uh, signal level at plus or minus 10, but this time I'm going to AC couple. So go to AC couple. And now what I'm going to do is run the signal again. And remember the signal is triggered from channel uh, A, which is great. So I'm now going to run this and let's see what happens. Which is a much more interesting thing going on here. So let it uh, just cycle this out. Now it's going to uh, capture it at this point and it's waiting for a rising edge here because that's what the trigger has been set to, which will lock it now. And uh, now it'll complete the rest of the waveform. There we go, which is looking great. And then when it's completed this uh, cycle, it'll then stop. And this is why it's gone to stop here. So if I want to capture it again, I would have to run it again. Uh, but that's all described in the triggering video that I, I do when we talk about this in detail. So I'm just, just gonna move this down here a little bit and we can have a look at what's going on. So let's go back to our circuit here and you'll see this capacitor that so blocks DC. So this is fundamentally become a high frequency filter. So, or a high pass filter as it's uh, classified as. So let us um, now go back to our waveform. So the thing about capacitors is that if you look at the state of the, um, the capacitor at this point um, in the circuit, this is measuring what's actually happening at this point here, okay? So we know at this point here, this is actually pretty much at uh, zero volts. There's our uh, red uh, graticules on this side, so that's zero volts here. But as soon as the signal changes and goes from minus 2.5 to plus 2.5, basically five volts has actually been um, added to the to the uh, the voltage swap, minus 2.5 to plus 2.5, and therefore this has to uh, change equally. If that's gone up by five volts, then this must go up by five volts. And so that's exactly what it does. So it's a reference point at that time, zero is pretty much zero volts. It jumps uh, up by five volts and then it actually starts to decay. So where is it decaying? Well, the decay is coming from the discharge here. And now you'll see as it discharges, because we've got such a long time constant on this, it's got enough time to actually discharge. This goes back to zero again, but when this signal then drops from um, plus 2.5 volts to minus 2.5, all of a sudden, this has to do the same thing. It has to mirror this high speed edge. And so it will drop 
by, uh, by, by 5 volts. And so the point there is at 0 volts. It must drop by 5 volts, so it goes to minus 5 volts and then starts charging up again. Because if we go back to this, this is reference to 0, and that's what it's aiming for. This is what this capacitor is charging and discharging to, is this reference point. Because we're running at such a slow frequency, we can actually see this. And it is actually possible to look at this and determine what the actual capacitance of that capacitor, uh, what the value of that capacitor is. Now we have a one meg uh, discharge uh, path here, and uh, there is a formula which uh, states that one time constant uh, equals uh, CR, so T is equal to CR. And um, in this case, where uh, T is in seconds and R is in ohms and C is in farads, well, we can actually say that uh, one time constant is 63% of the signal. So if we actually were to look down here, this starts at um, 5 volts and is dropping down towards 0 volts. So once the signal gets around to about 63% of that, which is actually down here somewhere, it's actually taking about one second to get to that point. Well, if you use the, um, the equation that uh, T is equal to CR, then it suggests that the capacitor that's actually um, in this circuit here is around about one microfarad. Now, I have actually checked on the data sheets to see if it actually states this capacitance. I can't actually find a statement for that, but it is actually possible to, uh, from this circuit to suggest this. This may, <laughs> this may be beyond your knowledge of what's going on. But what's important is that you understand that from this um, signal, which this is what's really going on at the signal source, but this is what your oscilloscope is looking at. So what is the point of um, AC coupling? And is really to observe AC signals which have a DC offset, e.g. things like power lines on a digital circuit. It's a great way of finding out what elements of the circuit might be causing trouble. When you look at the power lines and you actually look at the noise that's actually on a power line, and the way you can do that is by using AC coupling. So how can we sort of like demonstrate this in a bit more detail? So consider this circuit now. And in this circuit, we've got a 100 kilohertz sine wave, a 20 millivolt peak to peak and a nine volt offset. So a very different circuit. So uh, I'm going to now set this up and then we can actually look at these signals in more detail. Right, I've set up my signal generator. And once again, I'm actually going to show you uh, how I'm going to set up the scope uh, to get this signal. I haven't actually switched on the generator yet. Uh, so I want to get out of this mode where we've got this very, very slow signal. So what we've got is a DC signal of nine volts, but with um, a, a 100 kilohertz, 20 millivolt peak to peak signal sitting on it. And that's a very difficult signal to actually capture as we're about to find out. So let's have a look at how we can look at this. So I'm going to uh, switch off uh, channel B uh, for the uh, time being. And I'm going to uh, look at channel A. I'm also, uh, let's see, I'm going, because we're actually going to be looking at this from a low signal level, 200 millivolts makes it even worse. So I'm going to change my probe to, um, to times one. So let me just oops, put my both my probes on to times one. So I'm going to change that to times one because this is a very low signal we're going to be looking at. And whilst I'm at it, I'm just going to change my probe to times one on here. Um, so let's just go back to channel A. Um, we're on manual. We're going to uh, now that what this is this is where it gets really interesting. I'm just going to uh, put the triggering back into um, let's see uh, auto mode, and I'm going to uh, run this. And whoops, let's change our time division. Now we're looking at a hundred kilohertz, so we should be up in the tens of microseconds. So that's quite high speed. And I'm just going to put this back into the center of my screen down here. Uh, if we find the center, whoops, there we go. So we're, we've now got our signal. Now remember, we've got a signal which is um, uh, nine volts DC with a um, 20 millivolt uh, AC signal sitting on it. So what, how do I see that signal? So if I was trying to find this 20 millivolt signal, then that's great, but it's sitting on a DC uh, level. So 
and the DC level is at, uh, is at nine volts. So the only signal that will actually show me this waveform in uh, DC coupling is if I stick this on plus or minus 10 volts. I'm now going to switch my generator on. And now you can see that we've got this signal sitting at nine volts, but you can't see anything on there. You've got no idea. This would look like a DC level. But in reality, there is actually an AC signal sitting on this, but I can't see it because if I try and move in to this, I could I could bring my, um, uh, let's say I could put uh, some offsets on this to get rid of this so that I could actually uh, see, uh, bring this down in terms of, I could add a, a minus nine volt offset and let's just see what happens. So you can start to see something but I've got this plus 10 volts. So uh, can I see this in any more detail? So I can go uh, plus five, plus two. Oh, right. And this is now uh, gone over range. Uh, we've lost the signal. And uh, so we're not really able to the, see the signal anymore because the whole thing has actually just got messed up because we had a, an offset. But as we've changed the scaling, this DC offset's changed as well. So it's not working. So let me just get this back to uh, a zero uh, offset here and uh, go back to plus or minus 10. And there we are, got our signal back. So we can't see this tiny signal that's sitting on, um, uh, on this uh, DC level. However, if I now actually go to my uh, other channel and I put this onto manual and I put this onto 20 millivolts, and I now put this, and you can see it's already an AC coupling. You can now see quite clearly that this is the signal that's actually sitting on my DC signal. So sitting on this line up here is this waveform because we've got rid of the DC component and we've been able to actually look at the um, AC component in extreme detail. And this is why AC coupling exists. Um, it is uh, so important to uh, to understand when to use uh, AC coupling. If you want to see a signal for what it is, then DC uh, coupling allows you to see it as, as it actually is produced, right? But AC coupling allows you to see um, great detail of signals which have got a DC offset. And this is the best example I can show you of this, uh, just using test equipment to actually generate it. Um, if I change the um, the actual um, oscillation that's actually on this uh, nine volts DC line, just to show you that I'm not just making this up, if I go to the parameters and I change the amplitude to uh, 10 millivolts, for example, and there we go. And so I've now changed it to 10 millivolts. There's a tiny signal sitting on this DC line. And AC coupling is absolutely awesome because it allows me to see this in great detail. So let's go back to our uh, presentation. And uh, so what we've done now is we've actually seen this from an, a, uh, from an AC coupling perspective. Um, so I hope that actually makes sense. But can I demonstrate a real example of this? Um, and I'm going to try my best to do this with a bit of kit I've got. Uh, which is a PCB um, that I use for my students in uh, MEC 2200 at the University of Leeds. And uh, we're going to have a look at this <laughs> and see what happens. This is a sensor development platform that's used uh, by my students for developing the skills in uh, sensors and programming of uh, microchip uh, parts. And here I've got on this side here, which you see my finger is the plus 12 volts uh, going in. This is coming from a DC bench power supply. And here I can monitor the zero volts and the plus five volts, which is regulated from this device over here. So um, this has been quite well designed. So, um, so really the amount of noise on this is actually quite limited. Um, it'd be nice to have an example where it wasn't uh, quite as clean, but uh, because a lot of this is decoupled to actually stop noise. But just, this is by way of demonstration of how do you actually, why once again, we use AC coupling on a scope. So if you've got a really noisy um, 
uh, DC line, like we've got 12 volts coming in here, but what's my what's my five volt supply like and what's actually going on? Because this is really important for uh, electromagnetic conformity and emissions that uh, might be radiated by your system. And it's a real telling uh, sign if you've got a lot of noise on your power lines, because it says that maybe there's not enough decoupling on your board. Um, there may be particular frequencies being generated by the software that's going on in here. And it tells you an enormous amount but you cannot do it with DC coupling. And this I thought was probably a good example for you to have a look at. Now, what I've done is I've changed the settings in here. My probes um, are still on times one. Um, we, we're looking at the five volt uh, uh, power rail on this uh, development platform. So I've set my uh, scale to plus or minus 10 volts. And because we're looking at high frequency uh, stuff here, because I want to see this is about radiated emissions and the microcontrollers, I think, running at about um, 30 megahertz. Uh, so there's, there's a lot going on inside that. Um, but it's not actually running any major software. So it's idly sitting there waiting for events to happen. So really it shouldn't be particularly noisy anyway. Um, but um, this is just by way of example. So let me now um, switch my power onto my um, development platform that you just saw and see what happens. So here's the five volt line and you look at it and you go, yep, yeah, great, that's five volts. Um, that looks fine to me, uh, nothing major on there. However, What's really going on on this line? Well, this is where AC coupling comes in. So if I now put this onto AC coupling and that's now dropped down, but you'll see there's still nothing on it because we've still got plus or minus 10 volts. But what I'm really interested in is what's actually going on at the uh, millivolt level. And if I now swap this to the millivolts, you'll now see that there is noise on that, uh, on that DC supply. Now this, could be a very particular frequency and it could be related to the software that I'm running. Um, but you'll never see this with AC with uh, DC coupling. Let's just put it back onto DC coupling. It's gone over range because it's way out of, uh, uh, out of its normal uh, range because we're on 20 millivolts. So I've got to go back to plus or minus 10-ish or maybe even plus or minus 5 to see this. Um, and so here, that's great, um, but I can't see the detail. AC coupling all of a sudden allows me to see a lot of detail if I now move in to the very fine range here. And just to show you that this is being generated by the actual microcontroller uh, and the software that's running in this microcontroller, I'm gonna switch the power supply off and I switch it off. And now you will see, this is the just the general background noise level that's being picked up by the oscilloscope. And now I'm going to switch the power back on again. And now you will see there are distinct signals and distinct frequencies in there. And this allows me to hone in on maybe uh, if I'm going to EMC test house to find out why my uh, system is failing the electromagnetic conformity um, because of radiation. Well, this is a brilliant way of finding out what's going on. And once you start analyzing these signals in detail, um, you can actually hone in on where to improve your circuit from an EMC perspective. Now, I, I know many of you probably are not familiar with EMC, but um, I just thought I'd mention that EMC is electromagnetic conformity, just in case you didn't realize that. And all products that are commercially released into the market must um, have certification uh, because they mustn't interfere with other bits of equipment. And also they must survive uh, interference from other bits of kit. And this is why the tests are done. Um, so I hope that uh, this actually has made a bit of sense on why we use AC and DC coupling.